So as I said, we were going to come back once it was all dry. This is all dry now and I can put my hand on it. But I'm also going to go one step further and I am going to use, this is a panel canvas board. Um, I'm going to use it as a straight edge. I do have a plastic ruler somewhere in my messy studio to do use for this. But so I'm going to line up the corners so I can keep this nice and straight. Um, you notice how crooked I got before and etc. This is the cinnamon again. You could use raw sienna or any light tan color you wish. This has a bit of a amber color to it. So I've got it matched up corner to corner and I'm just going to lightly brush along. See how that comes out. It didn't, I can't, I, usually I would get my head down in there really close. So I'm going to be careful. Line it up. Now you know what, if you have paint pins, you could do this with paint pins. Good enough. See how it kept it nice and straight. I'm going to wipe off the edge so I don't drag paint. So I'm just going to take it. You see how it got on the edge? I'm just going to wipe it off. And that's what you would do with your ruler as well. And don't smoosh it around because you'll smear that line. You can wait until it's dry. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and set it on there. Line it up with what I think the corner would be down here. And... Go right back up. I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera while seeing what I'm doing. And there we go. All oh, great, great, great. That's much straighter than by trying to do a freehand, obviously. And if you feel like you've got it a little too heavy, and I, I could be fine with that. I was just going to show you. If you got it a little too heavy, I dampened a brush. This is another one of my Donna Dewberry One Strokes. This is the specialty brush set, and I just really like it. But this is the number six. You could do this with uh, any size, just so you can pull along. Thin out that line, it had a little bit too much water in it. So I'm gonna pull that up, pull that up. And just narrow that line. And wherever you might pick up too much, you can easily put in. Okay, so. I'm just gonna see if I can fix that. Just, yeah, see how easy just to do a short piece. Alrighty, so that is that part. I'm gonna go over the window again, just a touch. Just where, now I can really lay my hand on here to get some steadiness. Just fill it in a little bit more. Get it a little more opaque. And I'm good with that. I'm gonna get some wicker white out on my, this one's got, it's too gloppy. I'm not gonna use that one, it's done. Let me pull out the new wicker white from the container. And I don't think I have any other around that's already open, so. So there's the wicker white that comes in the kit that I was telling you about. These are the regular ones that have the matte sheen. Um, the multi-service will also work fine for this. This is just what came in this set that I had linked to uh, for you. So I pulled some white out into my brush, I should say not out. I'm gonna make sure I've got a nice thin point and I'm gonna go around the roof line just to get make sure it's good and defined. And I may even put some icicles. I'll show you in a moment. Just to find those edges really well. So I was lining around the roof line and giving it a touch of that white and then I was going to show you how on my original I had these icicles coming down. Also I wanted to point out, you see how this 
shadowing is much darker than this one. I like think I like the gray better, or I like the intensity of the gray. So we'll go ahead and do that in a little bit. But right now I'm just gonna touch my brush down and then flick it. Nope, not thin enough. That doesn't look like so. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, just some um, icicles hanging down. You don't want anything to be uniform. So just, you need to make your paint a little bit inkier, thin it out a little bit more, and just pull it down. And we'll give the top of the window just a little hint of snow along the top. And along the top of the barn ridge. Now the snow, you don't want it to be a straight line because snow never sits just straight across. And I don't know, do we want to do any on the cross piece? No, but we can highlight on one side. Let's see, I think the light's coming from this side. Let me see if I got that enough in there. I just lightened some of the cinnamon with my brush that had the white in it. And then we'll just bring a highlight across down this one side of the barn door. And maybe up this there, it just highlighted a little bit. And then, let's see. Okay, we need the shadow a little bit, but I'm gonna wait till the sun shifts and then I'll come back and we'll do that. All right, I'm back from my walk. I needed that. Okay, I'm gonna put some licorice, this is the black out of my palette. I'll put over here where I had the other black. Just a touch. And I'm going to line a few areas that need some definition. Now, I should have done this before. I did my icicles, but I was getting ahead of myself. So I'm just, I'm getting it inky, pulling to a point. This is my 10 aught. You could also use the number two liner and I'm just going to outline. Now try to go from, if you're right-handed like I am, from the left to the right and then you don't have to worry about getting your hand in anything. And I'm just going to run a small line underneath the roof line. Now, if I, I could have just gone straight across if it hadn't been for the icicles, but that's okay. It's all gonna work. And then I want to do under the snow on the roof, a tiny line, and then underneath the ledge there, And underneath this one cross piece, I'm going to be very careful. That's where leaning my hand on, that really helps on the snow. That's why I couldn't do it very well before. And this one, I'm going to go all the way across. There, on oh, that's underneath, and then I'll go underneath this snow on this one. Needed a touch more on there, just a touch, just a hair. Okay, so we got that. Now we're gonna add some shading underneath the eave, and I'll do that with the number. This is a number six flat. You do it with the 10 flat, eight flat, what have you, any of them will work. I have the brush moistened, I'm gonna dip the corner. I've got a little bit of water dripping on my ferrule. Drip the corner very lightly, and I'm gonna work it out. You see how it's getting faded? 
That's what I want. And I'm going to run it along the underneath of this eave that's black. And if you need it, get a little bit more in it. Go into that. You see how that is? And lay it down there underneath the eave. And I'm not seeing it, but sometimes it takes a minute for it to show up. I just want to make sure I don't get it very stark. I want it to be a faded bit. Whoops, I'm getting my hair in, sorry. I'm trying to get down here where I can see. I should have put my hair up. Yeah, we just want to create a shadow. And sometimes it really helps to do this with the uh, blending gel or the um, gloss medium. What is it? The Oh, I can't think of it right now, but glaze. Glazing medium. That's what I'm trying to think of. It helps me to have a little bit more control. So, okay, I think that's working. I'll add more if I need to later. And I can add a touch of shadow. But it is the water dries too quickly. Nope, I'm stuck. I'm going to get the glazing medium. I just do better with the glazing medium. All these little tips and tricks. Um, floating medium will also do this. Just a couple drops of the glazing medium. I have a damp brush. Moisten the brush some water on there still. And then do the corner. Yes. Perfect Amundo. And then, yes. I don't know why I fight it. Water, you can do it with water. I just have a more difficult time. So the shading under there. And I can do just a touch of shading. Maybe under here a little bit. Or the roof line adds a shadow. Okay. So we're all good there. We have our little details. Now some of these you could leave off. You could not put the snow on top of the trim. You could um, there's a lot of things you don't need to do. I would suggest you go ahead with the shadowing. That provides dimension, etc. So, um, like I said, with my practice piece, you see how this has this gray shadowing here? I do like that over just the blue. The blue is just not enough for me. Um, you can choose to leave it as it is. I am going to go, I'm going to get, this is the medium. Okay, I've got the medium gray out, and I'm gonna go back with my number 10. I'm gonna put in some white back for the roof. And my brush is damp, towel dried. To dry with a, it's still damp, but it's drier, it's not dripping wet. So I'm just gonna pull some of the white in. So it's moistened here. So you got some of the wet paint in there. And then I'm just gonna get a touch of the gray. And I'm just blending it slightly into the brush. The blue is still visible. So I'm just gonna flick it up Pull it up into that white so it creates the shadow. If ever you feel it's too much, add a little bit more white and flick some white back down on it. Go back and touch a gray, work it off the brush. There, I like that much better. Okay, so we've got those details in. So 